engineers see the world a little differently. A team that I've talked about in the past is, a, uh, is an incredible team. It's a not-for-profit. They're called Design That Matters. You may recall back in Orlando a couple of years ago, I had their infant incubator on stage with me. It was designed to be maintained and operated easily in the developing world. 1.8 million of the 4 million infant deaths that occur every year could have been prevented had they had access to a working incubator. Well, Time Magazine noticed what we talked about, and they recently recognized the Neo Nurture Incubator as one of the top 50 inventions of 2010. It incorporated car parts because the team found that even in the most remote areas, there may not be access to service diagnitions, but there certainly are mechanics working on cars and trucks in the community. So they built it out of car parts so that it could be serviced by the local mechanic. Headlights are used to keep the infant warm. Dashboard fans are used to circulate the air. And even the door chime is used to provide an alarm system to rescue the child. It's all powered by a simple motorcycle battery. That was perfected by a team of students under the leadership of our good friend, Timothy Prestero. That device right now is going through final trials in Nepal, India, Bangladesh, Cambodia, and Vietnam. And it is starting to save lives. Well, I'm here today to show you another project that's really cool that my guess is within a few years will also be recognized by Time Magazine. This is called the Firefly, and it's right here. I've got it here. We'll turn it on. The Firefly is used to combat infant jaundice. It turns out that 60% of infants suffer from jaundice in their first week of life. And if not treated properly, it can lead to disastrous consequences later on in the child's life. The treatment is actually very, very simple. All you need to do is shine visible blue light in the 460 nanometer spectrum on the infant's skin, and you can cure jaundice. But the challenge is to create a medical device that is appropriate for the very different settings of a poor and rural hospital. Hospital staffers simply don't get the kind of training that they need to operate complex devices. And in that part of the world, there are many more patients than there are caregivers. So design that matters asked a very different question. How can we create a device that is hard to use incorrectly? Think about that. All day long, we, de we design things that are easy to use correctly. They took it much farther, designing something that was hard to use incorrectly. It had to have a streamlined shape, because even in that part of the world, if it's not an attractive device, people won't use it. And it could not look cheap. People will not use an inferior design product. So they used SolidWorks, kicked out photorealistic renderings of the early concepts. Those renderings and that process with the caregivers proved to be invaluable because they could express different design concepts and present them and help break through the barriers of foreign culture and foreign language. It is a true living example that 3D is the universal language. Well, SolidWorks served as a kind of a virtual testing prototype for this device. It's intended to use to treat only one infant at a time. If you look at this, only one infant can fit in this. Design That Matters discovered that more than one infant was being put in the device and cross-infection rates were skyrocketing. So that was a critical element. It's also transportable. It's easy to put the child in the device and enter it here, and the child gets the proper treatment. Lights are shown from above and below so that the infant is treated completely. Makes it hard to use incorrectly. Well, Will Harris is with us. Will, Will helped design this. He's with Design That Matters. Thanks for coming, Will. Even I can operate it, two buttons. 